So we all know that we need to move to be healthy, don't we? But why do so many people still struggle to make time for it, even though that we know this? Well, usually it's because we're unmotivated, because we're not getting results. Maybe we're just not getting results fast enough. Maybe we don't know what's right for us. And maybe life just actually gets in the way and it's just not a priority. Definitely. And ever since we both became personal trainers back in the day, um, we've been <laughs> back in the day, in the day a long time. <laughs> well, a good, good couple of decades ago. Um, so we've been kind of tasked to trying to get people to move more. And that's kind of a common theme within this industry is move more, move more. And what we see with a lot of people is they try to force it into their diary instead of actually complementing it into their lives. Yeah. And when anything becomes forced, it becomes a challenge, it becomes hard, it becomes unenjoyable and just yeah, it's not going to be done. Okay, and we see people make excuses about not exercising, not moving, not doing things instead of actually prioritizing it because it is extremely important. We see people who look for big results in a short period of time. For example, they've got a wedding in six weeks or they've got a holiday in next yeah. month. <laughs> and they think that what they've done over the last 10 years is going to be fixed in two, like in less than a month. Um, so it's just unrealistic mm -hmm. expectations of this, this quick fix mentality. Um, we see people who kind of view exercise as a luxury or movement as a luxury instead of a necessity. Okay, how we move our body and moving regularly is a necessity. It's a non-negotiable. It's definitely not a luxury. Okay, um, we see people who get too overwhelmed to even start to to move or exercise because there's so much information out there, so much contradiction, so many people with their own opinions and their own views. People just get overwhelmed and just go, oh, okay, I'm not I'm not going to do anything. Just go back to what I know. Okay, and we also a lot of the times we do see people who kind of get really scared or intimidated when they go into like a gym or a class or uh, with the personal trainers because they see the intensity that they think they're going to have to work at mm -hmm. you see people sweating you see people breathing heavy and it just and it does scare a lot of people off um and it can intimidate a lot of people from actually starting so they just tend not to and uh, so it's important that we understand that these things don't need to happen okay we can it can be easy it can be easy because if we end up following those excuses or those those mm. ideas the things that we've seen people behave like in their relationship with movement like john's just described it then brings a whole host of other problems people then lack confidence mm. they feel like they're not getting results so they feel disappointed they're left wishing for results instead of actually enjoying them right yeah. and more often than not they actually then start to wait for a health issue or for a body image issue before they start moving and that is a big big problem because then we're being reactive rather than proactive and that's when we end up moving into a sick care mentality mm. rather than a health care mentality and that's a very um scary place to be for a lot of people and it's not one that you have to you can choose differently exactly it doesn't have to be that way and usually people like this are missing like um, a complete component altogether just missing the points of it <laughs> and they think that they have to sacrifice to get what they want um, and they're under the illusion that's hard mm -hmm. okay exercising hard moving is hard it's painful it's exhausting and but the fact is when it's done right it's easy and then they, you actually gain more than you lose yeah. And what you see a lot in social media and stuff like that, um, there's this hard mentality of no pain, no gain, is like is a kind of more the elite of the fitness world. It's not what the average person needs to do to keep a good level of health. Okay, that's if you if you want to be a sportsman or, or like a competitor or something like that. Yeah, it's going to be hard. But for the average person who's probably listening to us right now, who wants to just improve their health, feel better, all that, that it is easy. And if done right, it's a very simple, okay? And one thing we found that people, when they start to do this, they think they have to sacrifice everything. They've got to sacrifice time. Okay, I'll go, I'm going to go to the gym two, two to three times a week. But that means, okay, you do an hour at the gym, but you've got the time that it takes to get to the gym, get ready, then the time after. Um, but again, that doesn't need to happen. You've got people who think that you know, they've got to sacrifice a lot of money to be healthy, yeah. whether in gym memberships, personal trainers, all this sort of stuff, where again... You don't have to, okay? It's just the way that um, current society has portrayed that. Oh, you want to get healthy? Give me money, I'll make you healthy, okay? And one of the other things is about um, intensity, is about energy. And yeah, okay, you are going to have to expend some energy when you start moving your body, but that's the point because by using that, you actually generate more energy. But it's not about going hard and fast. It's not about that no pain, no gain mentality because you actually end up feeling fatigued. You feel exhausted you feel like crap and then you start to think that's how i need to feel to get the result and you don't 
okay yes you can work hard you can still feel you can still work hard have a great like uh, movement session and still come out feeling energized yeah and that's the point that's what we that's that's what we want and that's what we do you should be coming out of a plus not a minus exactly when, when you move <laughs> definitely in, in whatever way that is whether that's physically feeling better mentally emotionally it doesn't matter like it mm. really really make, makes a big difference and when our clients come to us as mm. well they often you know realize and they have that aha moment that actually small relevant changes that mm. fit into their lifestyle that's what's sustainable right just becoming aware and conscious of those key lifestyle factors are so important and they make all the difference without having to join the gym spend a fortune on home equipment um or even like just beasting yourself every day like john's just said Mm. you know they're often our clients are often often surprised that it's actually quite easy because like john said when it's done right you actually then get results faster you actually start to enjoy it and that's that's no matter what the goal is whether you want to feel stronger whether you want to um, be able to just move easier or feel less tense in your body and feel more free and more confident in yourself you know it's, it's so so easy when you're making those small relevant changes and that's kind of what we talk about here at wellness theory isn't it is about improving one percent every day just improving bit by bit it's like a building block we play the long game we make sure it's sustainable okay you still get results very 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 quickly and often with less effort than what people usually think yeah for sure guys and we're not saying that obviously but we we've been personal trainers i used to beat my clients back in the day and that's what my, that was my mentality that's what i learned that's all, all that i knew at that if you're time you're not doing burpees yeah. in every session it's not enough <laughs> exactly. if you're not crawling out the gym you're not working hard enough and it took me a while to realize that's actually rubbish okay yeah it feels good to do a hard session like psychologically you got through it but like you got to think why are you moving in the first place if you're just moving to lose a bit of weight or whatever then there's many ways you can do that. But if your goal is longevity, is lasting change, is feeling great, is like, again, that 1% improvement on your health, on your mobility, your flexibility, your strength every single day for the rest of your life, then it's about, it's not about that beasting. It's about how the quality of the movement that you're doing is going to, the byproduct of that will be the results that you want. And yeah, just to add to that, is like you said, they're like losing weight, mm. right? You either you listening to this or you know somebody yeah. that has either tried to lose weight or has lost lots of weight, and then they go and put it all back mm. on again. When you make the small lifestyle changes, mm. you get to lose the weight and keep it off. Yeah. Right? Like John said, then you you have that quality over that quantity mindset. And that's that's the, the forward thinking that we're losing as a society because mm. we're looking for these quick fix ideas. And actually in the long run you gain so much more um to your life and to your experience as a human as a human human. definitely but the funny thing is the world health organization recommends only five hours a week of aerobic exercise and two strength sessions Mm -hmm. that's not a lot in the grand scheme of things but less than five percent of adults actually adhere to this that means 95 percent of adults are falling way behind the curve on that one that's five hours a week. It's like most people <laughs> do that in a day, scrolling on social media or yeah, watching just Netflix. On your phone, it's yes. like if, if you can't commit to five hours a week, you've got to take a serious look and think, okay, how important is my health to me? How important is this body that I am inhabiting? Is it important? Like, do I want to do I want to feel energized and great as I get older, or do I want to start to break down, feel pain, and not be able to move as well? Okay, this is extremely important. Mm-hmm. So. It, what we obviously have what we do with our clients is we make it easier for them and what we want to share with you is how that you don't need to be one of those 95 percent that don't follow or, or behind the curve okay so by following kind of what we're what we're going to go through you can feel more energized you can reduce your stress you can reduce your risk of disease you can feel stronger you can feel more confident you can sleep better uh, feel happier and perform at your best so here are five things that you can do right now to actually make sure you're not part of that 95%. Let's get you in that 5% and start to increase that number and make sure that we're happier and healthier worldwide. And then World Health Organization can change their stats based on listening to this podcast. Here's hoping. All right, but listen, ultimately, like John said, it's your choice. What are you choosing for yourself and for your loved ones? Because unless you're healthy, you're not going to be adding much to them as well. Okay, so here's five things. The first one, okay, is to just choose something you enjoy. Okay, if you don't know what you enjoy or you think you don't enjoy anything, try something new. 
okay? And remember that you bring joy to what you do. You know, you're not just suddenly going to go for a run and joy hits you in the face, right? You generate that feeling, okay? You generate um, the the activities that you do through the choices you make. So choose something new, choose something that you enjoy, if you already know what that is, and keep it simple. Make sure it includes an element of kind of cardio, get so basically getting get a bit breathless of what you're doing, and an element of resistance, so a bit of strength in there. So it could just be like a bit of body weight after you go for a little jog or a walk even like so think about what that could be for you okay number two here is to schedule 30 minutes into a realistic part of your day okay just a minimum of 30 minutes per day uh, and involve other people in your life where possible so loved ones family friends um, and also i really sell it to them as well like 30 minutes is not a lot in your day you can do it first when you wake up or when you get home from work or even at lunchtime Okay, and if you work from home, even better. <laughs> you got loads of time to do it. And everyone's working from home everyone's, right now. Exactly. Pretty much. Um, and it's important when, when you schedule it, you're more likely to get it done. Literally, look through your diary, see where the most realistic part of your day is. Literally, put it in there, put an alarm in there. And once it's in there, and make it non negotiable. Yeah. So, whatever happens in my life, I will make sure I move um, through, um, for that 30 minutes. Obviously, that doesn't mean then for the rest of the day just sit down and do nothing, but make sure the movements you're doing is like, again, like we said, a bit of cardio strength base. So you're getting the heart working, you're getting the bottle, the whole body working just to get things functioning and improve um, the quality of your physical body. One thing I would just want to highlight what John said there, which is so important, is it sell it to your loved mm-hmm. ones, sell it to the people that you're around. You let them know, invite them on board with you and be like, okay, 30 minutes. Every day I'm going to go for a walk be f- uh, just after breakfast. I'm going to go for a walk. Kids, husband, friends, yeah. you want to come? If the answer is yes, fantastic. You all commit to that and you do that together and it becomes part of the lifestyle change. If, however, they're like, uh, no, <laughs> uh, why would I want to do that? Well, obviously, you can tell me this is this podcast um, and like encourage them. But most of the time and unfortunately some of the time people are not going to be on board with what you want to do but you're still selling it to them that that's your time okay i respect that you don't want to join me but this is going to be my time so please understand that between 7 and seven thirty every morning i will be going for a walk right something super super basic but sell it to them in a way that helps them feel included and then also helps you enforce a boundary very very important depending on your situation okay because then they start to just expect it Right. In the same way they expect you to brush your teeth every day, they would expect you to just get up and go for a walk every day. Right. And then there's nothing out of the ordinary. And that's, again, going back to what John said earlier about that idea of losing something or gaining something. You actually gain that time and that energy for yourself and all the benefits of the movement in the first place. Yeah. yeah. So the third thing, okay, that you can do, okay, the number three is to become mindful of the movement that you are doing. Okay. So if you're going for a walk, Be mindful of the steps you take. Be mindful of how you're breathing. Be mindful of what you're witnessing as well in and around you when you're moving. Be mindful of how your body feels. You know, what which which muscle is doing what? Can you feel it in your butt when you're walking? Do you just feel it in your feet? Do you feel a bit of back pain? Like what is going on? Can you feel how your energy is rising? How incredible you feel? What is it? Be mindful. Definitely, guys, because if you're obviously, if you're like the majority of people, they go to a gym or they go exercise, they go for a run and they put their headphones on, they put music on and they just try to shut off. Distract. Yeah, it's like you're distracting from what you're doing. You're not, you're actually breaking that mind body connection. Mm-hmm. And what's happening is your head is focusing on one thing, your body's doing something else, and you've lost that connection. And it's okay to listen to music um, while you're running or doing anything, but make sure what you're focusing on, the sensations that are happening in your body, Because by doing that, you can tell if what you're doing is working for you or not. If you feel rubbish after doing it, that's a that's a sign that um, it's 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 not something your body enjoys. If you feel energized and awesome after doing it, that's something your body is your body is sending you a signal saying, "I love this. I want to do more of it." Mm -hmm. So be more mindful. You start to then make better choices around what types of movements and exercises that you um, that are best for you and you enjoy the most. Okay, because there's no such thing as generic, you must do this, you must do that. It doesn't exist. It's more often than not as well, people go do exercise like a to-do list. Yeah. Like, okay, I've yeah, done my squats now. Yeah. Okay, I've done my walk now. And it's <laughs> like, okay, well, that's good that you're tracking it and you're yeah. aware of what you're doing. You've got a bit yeah. of a plan, but be in the movement. Don't just be do present. the movement. Yeah. 
definitely. And number four here is about track and reflect on how it felt before, during, and after. Yep. Okay, so you've got to track what you're doing because how do you know if you're making progress? Yeah. Okay, so track it basically and reflect when you do, when you go for your walk. How did you feel before you went for your walk? Maybe you felt a bit tired, a bit heavy. And during your walk, you notice that you start to be more energized. You start to be, you start to feel lighter as you move. And then afterwards, you might feel energized and great. Okay, you feel great. I'm ready to take on the day. Um, or you might get to the end of what you're doing and feel, oh, I feel fatigued. I feel tired. I, I, just, I need a nap. Okay. <laughs> so these feelings are signals yeah. to your body and to you telling you that, okay, this isn't working or this is working for me. And then to make those tweaks and changes. And, uh, and then number five there is exactly yeah. that. It's to do those <laughs> yeah. tweaks and changes, right? If it's working for you, fantastic. You keep it the same mm. and just try and push yourself a little bit more uh, but like John said if you're not feeling good let's tweak it let's change up the intensity change up the duration change up the type of movement that you're doing um, and ladies in particular and um, this this was a big eye, eye opener for me is when I started to learn more about the infradian rhythm which is our second body clock and basically is our 28 day mm. cycle and how we feel differently across 28 days and I used to be a real glutton for this. I used to be like, no, I'm going to get up. I'm going to run every day. And I'd expect myself to be able to run every day and perform at the same every day like I was a robot. Okay. If we only had the 24 hour clock, it's easier to do that. It's not quite, you know, that robotic still, even for men. But for women, we go through such hormonal changes that actually we have different energy levels at different times and our body requires different chemical reactions in our system when we are exercising. For example, there's you know a couple of weeks in my cycle where I know running is no good for me. I know that I'm going to come back and I'm going to feel burnt out and I'm going to feel um, brain fogged and tired for the rest of the day. And that's not because I'm not fit enough. It's because that's just not what my body needs right now. But I know that when I'm in the other phases of my cycle, I can go running all day long and I can come back and I'm buzzing and I'm feeling energized, but that's because I'm aware. I've done these five steps. I'm doing something I enjoy. I schedule it to make sure it happens. I'm mindful so that I then can track it and understand it and reflect on how am I feeling before, during and after. And then I get to tweak it. And the only way I was able to come to that conclusion for myself with regards to running, in my example, is because I did those five things. Mm. Exactly, and it's, it's 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 listening, like you say, it's listening to your body. Like same with men, same with women. You're going to get days where you're not going to feel as strong or as quick or as supple. Okay, and that's not. And and, and I know so many clients in the past, and so many people come and go. Oh, what's happening? Am, am I doing it wrong, or am I am I am I moving backwards? No, it's just your body. Your hormones are telling you it's time to take a step back. Okay, listen to your body. Take a step back. It's okay to go back and forward and back and forward because you're going to get times where you don't need to push yourself and times where you can, okay? And then just so listen to yourself and don't take things as, oh my God, something's going wrong. It's not going wrong. It's and, your body adapting. And when you listen, mm. like John just said, they're going backwards, forwards, backwards, forwards a little bit. That's okay because there's a bit of movement. We're exactly. not, we're never supposed to stay the same. Mm, That's just exactly. not nature, right? So we're going to have a little bit of backwards and forwards. And then though, when we go forwards again, we go forwards more when we listen right we always it almost springboards us forward sometimes we have to slow it down to be able to speed back up exactly. again right like a catapult it's the same idea here but again it only happens when you're aware and you're listening and respecting and honoring your body when you are in that mode if we are feeling like we need to lighten up and take a bit of a rest when it comes to movement then it's essential that we listen to it rather than judge it and give ourselves a hard time about not doing it no, we say, okay, cool, no worries. Let's see how we feel tomorrow. Okay, you just can't go a long time, okay, doing that every day. Right? That's when something psychological is going on up there and you think, oh, I just can't exercise, it's not for me, or I can't move, it's not for me. You are born to move. Exactly. Okay? Definitely, and remember, it's not, not to go too fast too soon. Yeah. Okay, because you do that, you will feel rubbish. You will literally be walking around like you've been hit by a bus um, for like a week. And it will put you off, okay? And your body needs time to adapt to what you're doing to it. So slow and steady as you go, okay? Especially when you're first starting off, very important, okay? Your body doesn't know what to do with what you're doing yet. It needs to find its rhythm, needs to find its time. So slow and steady wins the race, as they say. Literally, <laughs> literally. it will. Literally. Exactly. Um, also, like we said, being in the moment, okay? If you're, if you're working out, don't think about what you've got to do 
at work later or don't think about what's happening at home or don't think about what you did yesterday. Just be in the moment, okay? Don't use it as a tick box exercise like Charlotte said because um, you choose the experience, um, experience you want to experience. And by doing that, if you want to get a positive and resourceful experience from it, you will get the benefits from it as well. But you have to choose to be in the moment and focus on exactly what it is you want and the outcome you want from it. Okay, and also like we said many times, I think this is probably about the hundredth time I've said it, listen to your body, listen what it's telling you. Okay, don't just blindly trust others um, without questioning it. Mm -hmm. I, I, oh, I remember a long time ago, you would see people coming to the gyms following a workout from a health magazine or they would ask for advice and then you'll get a trainer without asking any questions would write up a quick program for them and they'll go and do it in the gym. Mm -hmm. I said, got, got an app or a video yeah, or an app. Or, yeah, and I said, yes, those are good, like, it's good learning experiences to see what's out there, what's around. But following it blindly can cause you more harm than good because you don't know, like, that, that person who's advised that for you, giving you that advice or that program is very generic. It doesn't account for your individuality, your uniqueness, and how your body will respond. Okay, so it's important that you start to question these things. And if you do go and seek help or ask for advice, it's important that you understand that and then you question everything that someone says. Just because someone's a professional doesn't mean they know what's best for you. Yeah. They can advise you on what they know works for what they've done for themselves or other people, but they they don't know what works for you yet. So if they don't even ask you those simple questions of like, what have you done them before? What, is your, what have you responded to? What do you feel good doing? What do, you, what do you not feel good doing? And they just give you something. That's a clear sign that that is not the right the right person to help you you're the professional of you right exactly. at the end of the day you're the boss of you right don't anybody ever tell you otherwise Hus husband yeah. or anything like that trust in but, yourself but yeah trust in yourself yeah. movement and all of these wellness habits that we talk about they they are they all come back to our intuition and listening mm. to those responses absolutely there's skills yeah. and there's knowledge that, that you need to be aware of like the effects of certain exercises mm. certain times um of your cycle or certain foods and whether they're nutritious or not there's skills and there's knowledge for you to to absolutely absorb and understand but that intuitive nature of what you're experiencing that's what you bring to the table when it comes to your results and if, if you almost switch that off and just follow somebody else's lead without that intuition without that feedback mm -hmm. mechanism then you're going to struggle to get real results definitely yeah. Okay. All okay. right. So in that case, um, I think that's a wrap for us nice. until now. So just like a few of our other um, episodes, we're going to encourage you now to grab that wellness journal, score yourself on a scale of one to five, one being low, five being high, based on where you're at with your movement. Did you move today? <laughs> if the answer is no, it's going to be a one, right? Yes. Maybe you moved, but you wasn't particularly mindful. Maybe you get a three. Maybe you moved and you were mindful and you was in it. You felt amazing. That's a five, mm. right? So just listen to yourself. Listen to that intuition. Observe your day. Observe how you've been functioning from a movement standpoint. And again, listen to what you score so you can improve it the next day. That's it. Awesome. Clear and concise. <laughs> all right, all right. So in that case... Yeah, that's it from us today. Yeah. So we look forward to seeing you on that next episode. Take care. Bye. Bye.